Hi, welcome to this edition of Florida Zipic Heroes, sponsored by the Florida Festivals and Events Association. I am Laura Rhinus, Special Events and Talent Coordinator for the City of West Palm Beach. And with me today, I have Joanna Marie Cave, who is the Executive Director of Festival of the Arts Boca. She has officially been with the festival for seven years, but has supported it since it was established in 2007. Festival, festival of the Arts Boca promotes the cultural arts. It enriches the quality of life of residents for Boca Raton, North Broward, and Palm Beach County. Welcome, Joanna Marie. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Let's dive right in so the audience can see why you are this week's Florida event hero. <laughs> question, first question. My partner in this series, Kristen Hicks, who is conducting the written interviews on Event Heroes, we're discussing how blessed we feel to live in Florida, where mm -hmm. events were able to start back up again much sooner than in other parts of the country and even the world during the pandemic. Do you feel that the area of the state that you're based in, South, South Florida, or being just in Florida in general, helped you get back to live events faster than other parts of the state or country? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, first of all, we weren't even able to do our event live. We did an all virtual event. However, we did have a couple of hybrid events where we did have audience members, but we took it even a step further. We not only took advantage of it, we made it center stage. We made our beautiful city of Boca Raton, our venue. When we knew that we could not use our home, the Meisner Park Amphitheater, because it was shut down due to COVID, we decided let's showcase the entire city. And we got very creative. We had to think completely differently. We found different venues that would allow us to have some protection from the elements, but still the safety of outdoors for both any attending or our musicians who are performing because we are a music performance and literary festival so we got very creative with our venues we reached out to some wonderful existing partners such as the Boca Raton Airport Authority and we held a concert in an airplane hangar at Boca Raton Airport which was very exciting we had an airplane as our backdrop and a Steinway in front of that where this fabulous concert took place with actually a locally based musician who graduated from the Dreyfus School of the Arts here in West Palm Beach. She's an internationally known and metropolitan opera star. And she was able to be here because she was shut down at home with COVID. So we had a fabulous concert at the airport. We also teamed up with the Boca Raton Innovation Campus, which had a beautiful outdoor venue, which we ended up not actually being able to use because our host, um, our, our guest, a uh, violinist, was not able to physically get here. So he recorded from his home, but I did do an interview with, uh, with somebody at Boca Raton Innovation Campus, and we talked about that beautiful venue, and we hope to use it in the future. There's also a fabulous catering venue here in Boca Raton called the Addison. We had used them when we did our virtual gala in the fall, and they had this gorgeous courtyard where we had musicians performing, and where else were, oh, Boca Raton Hotel and Club, which has been a longtime partner with the festival. And they hosted our last concert of the season, which was a hybrid. We had some people there live, and then it was also recorded and broadcast for our virtual festival. It, so yeah, Florida was, we would not have been able to do this, say in Vermont, I don't think. <laughs> And even if you could have, I don't know if anybody would have wanted to come out in the snow. It would have been chilly. Yes. <laughs> it would have been chilly. But I mean, how, how innovative were you? Um, you need to send in a picture to go with this interview as the click through of that Steinway in front of the airplane at the Boca Raton. I, know, I have some great photos. That sounds like a beautiful optic to set off this interview. Um, and then just innovation in general, how you were able to use the beautiful city of Boca Raton and all of its venues and everybody stepped up together to pull the event off, um, which does lead nicely into our next question. It's a two-parter. Mm -hmm. Were you able to retain all of your staff throughout the pandemic? And what does your current event portfolio look like going into 2022? Will you keep um, some virtual elements or do you plan to go fully live or a hybrid? You know, at this point, it's looking like hybrid. We were able to maintain all of our staff, although we, we have a very small uh, number of staff members. In fact, many of our team members are 
in various parts of the country. Our artistic administrator is based in New York. Our marketing director and editor is in Vermont. So we were able to, to keep our team intact. And luckily we, we all had the skills and the background necessary to make this happen. Going forward, I have to tell you, we had such an overwhelming positive response to our virtual offerings. You know, many of our attendees are older and have difficulty getting out, not just during a pandemic, but all the time. So we're thinking of making a virtual element part of the festival moving forward. Exactly how we don't know yet. Our festival is in March, so we have some time, but we feel confident that we're going to be able to make this virtual element part of our festival moving forward. And, you know, I'm hearing that from other cities and festivals that I've been interviewing, how because of this, something good came out. People who weren't able to attend in the past mm -hmm. before COVID right. because of limitations, whatever those may be, were able mm -hmm. to now attend because of all the virtual and innovation that has come out of what could have been a really negative situation. Absolutely. Um, so then what was the most unique thing you did or are doing now to make Festival of the Arts Focus successful and stay relevant during the pandemic? Well, I think our concert in the airplane hangar was definitely unique and exciting. Uh, we had to stop music a few times for planes to go in and out. Mm -hmm. But um, I think one of the biggest things that contributed to our success is that we did not, we did not make it where you had to buy a ticket. Uh, we made it available to everyone for free. We did ask people to make donations and they did far more than we expected them to. But I think the fact that we made it accessible and easy for everyone was a really big plus. And we had people viewing in 22 different countries. Wow. And so we're hoping that some of the people who viewed from other parts of the country or from wherever are going to come to Boca now that they see what we do and what we have to offer. So we were actually able to broaden our reach. Another thing we learned, which I think a lot of people may not have learned, there's really no advantage to going live. You know, <laughs> it's like you record it and then you only make it available live once. Mm -hmm. so that people need to register and they need to see it the one time. But really, don't take chances, especially with live performance uh, with music. Our authors were live and they were much like this. We used um, a different, we did not use Zoom, but we used something very similar. We had authors in people's homes three nights out of the festival. And I was right where you see me now. My living room became a studio and uh, I, I learned how to set the stage as we all did, I think, during this. But I think keeping it accessible uh, was important. I think also knowing that when you're online, about an hour is about how long you want it to be. Don't go over that. And I, I think that was it. And also really tapping into your team's specific skill set. Mm -hmm. I have a broadcast media background, which really came in handy this year as I was able to host and help produce. We have a dynamite editor. Uh, it, it all just really worked together. And that I, we, again, I keep hearing that story too, how people's strengths came out, mm -hmm. how people you know, relied on the team, different elements of the team and, and how everybody could come together. In, in your case, an entire community came together yes. to pull off an event that is an outstanding testament to how you know resilient we are in the community now this next question you've kind of already touched on it but if you could think of anything else we'd love to hear it um the pandemic did force every planner to re-examine their entire rule book on how effective mm -hmm. events are produced what one new idea did you or your team come up with that you could share with your fellow ffea members as a best practice going forward i think keeping it free and accessible, easily accessible, was probably the number one thing. We saw so many people who did pay-per-view who got, you know, just a smattering of people um, buying tickets. We think it's more important to be out there for everybody. And, and the reason we could do that, quite frankly, was because we have such wonderful sponsors who really helped, uh, you know, pay for this year's festival. They are a big part of it, of course, every year. But without ticket revenue, our sponsors really stepped up. 
and the city of Boca Raton especially. So that was, that was I think, a big thing. There's so many people who maybe wouldn't have purchased a ticket to go to a concert because they didn't know what to expect and didn't want to make the investment felt, well, why not? It's free and I could always turn it off. And I think they learned that uh, the festival is somebody they can trust for high quality entertainment. So even though that's a best practice learned, do you think, and you don't, you might not know yet because it's, you have a year, but do you think you might re-examine that charge for a ticket or maybe a VIP experience to help underwrite the festival? Or do you feel that your sponsors and donators, donators um, will step up and keep underwriting the festival next year? Well, our sponsors pretty much get a VIP experience when the festival is live and in person, which hopefully it will be. Um, you know, we really don't know what next year will look like. I don't think any of us do. I think it's very possible that there's going to be a new normal. I think it's possible that there will no longer be intermissions at concerts. I think it's possible that we will still have to be socially distant. But we are looking at every possibility, but we feel confident having come through this last year that no matter what it comes our way, we'll be able to figure it out and we'll be able to meet those challenges. One other thing, which I, I, I have to say that we did because I'm so incredibly proud of it. We were starting our very first music competition for uh, middle school and high school aged students. And we managed to have this competition virtually we had students send in videos. We judged them. We had an award ceremony, which we did via Zoom, where we announced all of our winners. And we awarded almost $10,000 in cash prizes to these very talented students who told us how important this was to them, especially this year when it was so difficult to be a musician and to take lessons via Zoom and to do all that. But this. Um, they said was a really bright spot for them. And I have to tell you something that we are immensely proud of here at the festival because education, arts education is a big part of our mission. And we were able to see that through even during this very difficult year. Oh, and I could not agree more at where I work at the city of West Palm Beach, right up the road from you. Um, we mm -hmm. implement students, we encourage students to come into our programs whenever possible. We work with Dreyfus, you mentioned them earlier. Um, and just, I book, that's what I do for the city is I book all of the entertainment. So being able to get the entertainers, the performing artists back on stages has just right. been such a, a boost to morale to the entire community because this is their livelihood. And we're, we're grateful to you um, for finding these innovative ways to encourage these students. You know, a lot of them, they couldn't do graduation. If they were a senior in high school, they couldn't do prom. All of the things they missed out. So was one of those. Yeah. anytime the community steps up to help students, that is just an amazing, amazing thing you did. Thank you for that. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up here because we wanna keep on schedule. Uh, when speaking candidly, like we have today about the challenges event planners have faced over the past year, it can be somewhat overwhelming to look at where we are now compared to how the landscape looked in 2019. However, we are optimistic for a bright future and we like to end every discussion on a high note. And I think we've kept this one very positive anyway, <laughs> so that's great. Um, but Joanna, could you provide, oh, sorry, Joanna Marie, could you provide some concluding remarks that leave our audience with some hope about the future. I think we've, I think the biggest thing we've learned is that we are so resilient and that no matter what challenges come our way, we can figure it out and we can make a great experience for everyone to participate in, whether it's at a computer screen, much the way we are right now, or if it's live and in person, I think, I think the future's bright. I think it will look a little different, but I still think that especially by next March, people are going to feel better about being out, more people will be vaccinated, but we'll still take precautions, we'll be smart, we'll be safe, and I think people are just really gonna be hungry for that live music experience and those live interactions with the amazing authors that we bring to the festival every year. I think the future's bright. And I could not agree with you more. Hungry, that is, I think, a great word to describe how people in general feel about wanting to get back out there. Thank you, Joanna Marie, so much for the outstanding work that you do at Festival of the Arts Boca and for sharing your story and insights with the FFEA community today. 
On behalf of the Florida Festivals and Events Association, we thank you, our audience, for your time and hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Bye. Bye, thank you so much. You are very welcome.